Good morning and welcome to Sunday Agenda. I'm Helen Daly. Well, it's been quite a week for the federal opposition. Coalition members coming from everywhere, each with a different line on the government's emissions trading scheme. First, we had wait and see till after the Copenhagen conference. Then we had, well, let's pass it in case the government calls an early election. And finally, late on Friday, Malcolm Turnbull attempted to pull the whole team together by setting out nine amendments the government must make to get the ETS through the Senate. And through it all, he had to contend with Wilson Tucky, representing those in the party room who don't want an ETS in any shape or form. Let's have a look at Mr Turnbull's week. Are you arrogant and your shadow cabinet sycophants for abandoning your principles on emissions trading? Well, I'm, uh, the shadow cabinet is as arrogant as Wilson Tucky is humble, let me put it that way. <laughs> Something has to be done about our leader in being arrogant, inexperienced, um, in handling the biggest issue that will confront our opposition in this term of government. Every family has an uncle who goes a little wild at uh, a family wedding. We will vote against this legislation in August, as will every other non-government senator. We're not seeking unanimity, we're seeking consensus. We're seeking the support of a majority. Well, can the coalition pull it all together? Our first guest this morning will be very much in the engine room trying to make sure it does when Parliament resumes after the winter break. Christopher Pine is Manager of Opposition Business in the House and he joins me live from Adelaide. Christopher Pine, thanks very much for joining me. Good morning, Helen. Now, what a week. I mean, how much coercing and cajoling of Shadow Cabinet did Malcolm Turnbull have to do to get the compromise and a nine-point plan? Well, Helen, I think it looks much worse than the reality. The one thing upon which we all actually agree is that the legislation that, as has been put by the government, is a dog of a piece of legislation. Even members of the Labor Party describe this ETS legislation as a dog. And everybody thinks it should be changed, whether they're in the Labor Party, the Greens, the Coalition, business and industry, Greens groups. Nobody believes that the Wong Rudd legislation uh, should stay as it is when it comes into Parliament in August. So all right. Christopher all the Pine, Coalition has could, said is that you, you know, we've, got, we've got suggestions about how to improve it. All right. If you could possibly answer my question, which was how much coercing and cajoling of the Shadow Cabinet had to go on to get this far? Well, absolutely none. I mean, the Shadow Cabinet meets very regularly and uh, we discuss where we think the, the best uh, outcomes for the Australian people lie in legislation. All we right, so there was, no heated, there was no obviously. heated discussion about the compromise? Now, there was no heat in the discussion at all. Uh, it was a telephone hookup, so of course it's hard to have heat <laughs> in a telephone hookup. But no, absolutely not. I mean, what we are trying to do is ensure that the ETS legislation of the government does not ruin uh, Australian jobs primarily. Now, the Rudd and Wong legislation uh, must be changed. I think everyone agrees on that. And it's simply a matter of how it's changed and uh, when it's changed, uh, whether the coalition uh, feels it's changed enough to be able to vote for it. Well, did this really come about, the, the compromise um, in the telephone hookup, to stop the opposing views and the seeming chaos of the opposition last week? Monday, you had the idea of the compromise floated. Tuesday, Wilson Tucky's damaging email, which said no way, and he called Turnbull arrogant and inexperienced. But then Thursday, Nick Minchin said definitely you would vote against it in August. Then Friday, uh, Malcolm Turnbull says we will compromise if the government accepts amendments. That's pretty chaotic. Look, I don't think so. I mean, Helen, Nick Minchin said that we would vote against this legislation. What he was talking about is what I've talked about this morning, which is that we won't support a piece of legislation that will hurt Australian jobs and not achieve and simply export um, emissions overseas. Uh, what we're talking about is if we can improve this bill, uh, the ball is now in the government's court to come back and, and say, yes, we can negotiate with the opposition. If they want to arrogantly say, we will pass our legislation regardless because we don't care about Australian jobs and we don't care about exporting emissions, that'll be a very arrogant government indeed and the pressure will be on them, not on the opposition. Well, Nick Minchin didn't make any um, mention at all on Thursday night on ABC about <coughs> any compromise, so it really made him look pretty silly. He was so adamant you would vote against it. 
He was talking specifically about the current piece of legislation and uh, the government needs to seriously understand that the, gov the opposition is offering suggestions that will save Australian jobs, that will not just export emissions to overseas countries, but will in fact uh, be good for Australia. Uh, let's not forget it was the opposition that first proposed an emissions trading scheme when we were in government. The idea that somehow the Liberal Party is opposed to an emissions trading scheme is quite frankly ludicrous. We suggested it when we were in government and the Shergold scheme uh, was the emissions trading scheme of the Howard government. So we don't want to be p positioned by anyone as somehow being the party that's opposed to the emissions trading scheme when we put it forward, we proposed it in the first place. OK, well, the government has indicated that we'll consider the amendments, which it did say were very vague, once they've been agreed by your party room. Now, are you likely to get agreement in the party room? The principles that have been placed on the table on Friday uh, have been agreed to uh, by the Shadow Cabinet uh, and they, will, they, are, they, they form the basis of any amendments that the government wishes to make to the legislation. The government is just game playing. Unfortunately, we always see with the, with the Rudd Labor government, it's all about politics. It's never about what's good for the country. It's always about how to win the next election, never about how to improve the economy, get us out of debt and deficit and protect Australian jobs which is great disappointment. The government should rise above petty politics. It just can't seem to do so. But do you think uh, Malcolm Turnbull will be able to get agreement by Wilson Tucky and his Liberal supporters who are dead against it, let alone the Nationals, to get agreement in your party room? I have no doubt at all that the party room will back Malcolm Turnbull's strong leadership. Malcolm Turnbull is showing real strength of leadership by leading from the front on working through the emissions trading scheme legislation. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull will get the backing of the Shadow Cabinet and the party room. I have absolutely no doubt about it. What makes you so sure about that? Because we've had pretty strong um, comment by Wilson Tucky, certainly it made the public arena, that uh, there's no way that any amendments will make this any better and he, he's not for it. Well, Wilson Tucky's made his position very clear. Uh, he used to make the same statements when John Howard was the Prime Minister, uh, when Brendan Nelson was the leader, uh, when Peter Costello was the, was the Treasurer. Uh, Wilson Tucky is entitled to his view. Uh, we are a broad church uh, in the Liberal Party. We are a genuine democratic organisation, unlike the Labor Party. Uh, but Wilson Tucky does not speak for the Liberal Party or for the party room. All right, Christopher Pine, do you agree with your colleague Tony Abbott that you have to move on this and, and do this because you don't want a double dissolution election with a trigger and you don't want a fight you can't win, as Tony Abbott said? No, I think that we need to change this legislation to make it better for the good of the country. Uh, I don't think we should uh, make our decisions based on uh, elections or double dissolutions or political strategy, and I don't think we should commentate on those matters. The electorate will make a decision on election day about who they think is best to reduce debt and reduce deficit, to get the economy back on track, to create jobs. The reason why we need to change the emissions trading scheme legislation is because it's bad legislation. It's a dog of a policy, as has been said by members of even the Labor Party. And what the opposition is suggesting are principles that would improve it for the good of all Australians. All right, surely you wouldn't want to give the government a double dissolution trigger. You wouldn't want to fight an early election. Look, we're in opposition, Helen, so if there's an early election, it gives us another opportunity to get back into government. Uh, I'm not in the least Even bit Even though you're not riding about... high in the polls at all. Well, I'm not in the least bit concerned about whether we have an early election or whether we don't have an early election. I think it's slightly pathetic, actually, that all Kevin Rudd talks about is early elections and opportunities, and Wayne Swan talks about double dissolution triggers and so forth, as though it's some kind, as though politics is some kind of parlour game run by politicians in Canberra. We are in Canberra to try and serve the Australian public. I serve the electorate of Sturt and the people within it. We need to change the emissions trading scheme legislation to protect their jobs and to stop emissions from simply being exported overseas. Right, that well is on, our priority. On that, Whether can we I have just an election ask or not, you... quite frankly, is neither here nor there.
Are you concerned then that your amendments will paint you as the party of big business carbon polluters since your amendments pretty much push everything that they want? You want more protection for the heaviest polluters, which the government is already planning to compensate. What our amendments will do, what the principles that we've laid down will do, is protect Australian jobs and ensure that Australia is not so out of kilter with the United States that in fact all we end up doing is exporting emissions overseas. See, the Rudd government has jumped the gun on the emissions trading scheme legislation. The Copenhagen is in November, hasn't even, is in December, hasn't even been held yet. The legislation in the United States Senate is not through the Senate yet. We really need to make sure that Can Australia is not so far ahead of the United States that in fact what ends up happening is that we lose Australian jobs and we simply export our emissions to another country. Now that would hardly be uh, a good outcome for Australia or indeed for the climate. All right, what is the public, Christopher Pine, to make of Malcolm Turnbull's leadership when one MP so openly criticises him and calls him arrogant and inexperienced? Uh, you've said that, you know, Wilson Tucky speaks like this um, with other leaders as well, but it doesn't show much respect for this leader, does it? Well, Wilson has a history of speaking out publicly about uh, subjects and about other leaders. Uh, he's done it to leaders going back for the last four or five years. Yes, as you've said, but it doesn't show respect that. for this leader. Well, maybe that's a matter that Wilson Tucky should address, as opposed to the rest of the Liberal Party having to address uh, Wilson Tucky's decisions to speak out publicly whenever he feels like it. That's a matter that Wilson Tucky needs to rein in or needs to address, not the rest of the Liberal Party. Okay. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull is showing strong leadership. He's leading from the front and he will get respect for that, not only from the party room, but also from the general public. And Wilson Tucky is, in, is entitled to put his view, uh, I don't agree with it, it's not agreed to by the vast majority of people in the Liberal Party, but we are a broad church, we are right. a genuine democracy, and Australians are seeing that on display. Just in our final few seconds, Kevin Rudd's essay on the road to recovery also has a go at your side of politics, arguing that you have no economic management credibility because you argued so strongly against stimulus packages and deficits and debt to help us out of the downturn. Well, Helen, I've just been in Israel with Julia Gillard doing the Australia-Israel Leadership Dialogue. And the, the uh, irony of Israel is that because of the weakness of their political situation, they weren't able to pass a budget when all the other countries like the Australia were giving out stimulus packages. Israel couldn't. And their economy is no better and no worse off because of it. So the idea that the stimulus package of the government has somehow uh, saved the Australian economy uh, doesn't, isn't borne out by the experience in Israel where without a stimulus package they were no better and no worse off. Kevin Rudd, let's not forget 18 months ago, was fighting an inflation dragon. The next thing we knew, he was spending money like a drunken sailor. It'll be fascinating next year to see what the new chapter of the Rudd economic book looks like. All right, we'll leave it there. Christopher Pine, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Helen. Good to be with you. And you're watching Sunday Agenda. Next, we're looking at Labor politics through the eyes of an insider in the lead-up to the ALP National Conference coming up after this short break.